Okay, so the elk stack, or as I like to call it, the lex stack, right? Because that's really how it works. We have uh, the log stash is actually going to feed uh, into the last search, right? But uh, by Mr. Floppy. Okay, so what is the elk stack? Um, it is a, like I said, I think uh, when everybody was first getting on, it is basically just a, a data analysis platform, right? Um, and it uses three open source tools, with which is the Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana. Um, and I think that the reason that it's important and, and why it's it's a great cybersecurity project for some of those um, for beginners, but also, I mean, it, it sounds like industry wide, this is used. Uh, I think it was uh, Code Blue was saying that his his uh, organization uses it. Um, but th the reason it's important is logging is is super critical when we're talking about cybersecurity, right? So. Um, it allows us to do those incident detections. We can go in, look at the logs and see, you know, what's been happening. Uh, it allows us to do that threat intelligence or uh, threat analysis. And, and that leads into that forensics portion, right? And then at the end of the day, one of the big movements in the industry from, to, from the compliance side and insurance side is data aggregation, data uh, analysis, right? You have to have data to back up um, like your, your compliance uh, program, right? So, because uh, this is just going to prove that, that you're doing your due diligence. Uh, and, and so that that's why it's really important. And so that's what the Elk stack is. And and this is from their website. I do think this is a, a pretty cool infographic. What it's really showing here is that uh, Beats is, is something we're not really gonna cover today, but that is actually what is feeding log stash, right? So this is the data collection portion and there are different um, like different ways of, of uh, collecting that data. And, and so they call them different beats basically. Uh, but that feeds log stash, which then uh, moves into Elasticsearch and Kibana, right? Um, and this is just like, I was like, I want to understand it like I'm five, right? So log stash pulls the data. It is the, it's what pulls all of it to a central uh, location or platform, if you will. Elasticsearch is going to be like the heart of the, of this um, specific platform. So it is processing the data and then Kibana just makes it pretty, right? So we're getting that data visualization uh, and, and and making it, it look really nice, all right? And so I'm not trying to bore you all with a, a PowerPoint, so we'll jump right into that demo. Uh, but does anybody have any questions or, or want to expand on any of this before I move on? Good. Okay. Good. Also, I just want to uh, make sure, Sean, were you, uh, are you recording? Sorry, I didn't mute myself. Yeah, I'm recording. Okay, awesome. Yep. And, and, and I'm so, recording the right screen this time. <laughs> yeah, awesome. And so uh, one thing I did want to highlight here, it, with Elasticsearch, it, it's it's basically, um, it's it's really important because it's it's really fast and it scales very easily, uh, but it uses a uh, data structure called an inverted index. I went into a deep dive on this, but it, that basically allows you to do um, like, you're able to look through documents without actually having to pull the documents uh, specifically. And so you're, you're able to very quickly move through large amounts of data looking for very specific uh, like bits of data, right? Like, so uh, you can use uh, hashing um, in order to do that. So you're uh, able to quickly move, move through the data mm -hmm. using hashes. And then it's also very uh, memory efficient. So, um, so just some, some notes that I took. All right, let's jump into the demo. I'm going to change my screen real quick. Let's see here. Let's see if you guys can see the uh, Elk Stack clone. Mr. Jelly. All right. Um, okay, so with this, we are going to uh, open up a terminal and let me know if everybody, just like a maybe a quick thumbs up or just come off mic say like you're actually following along or not i i don't know is anybody actually following along because that will actually yeah, yeah. be how slowly i go yeah i'm going to be as well okay awesome yep okay with that then let me get my um i actually have the uh commands ready to go as well does anybody use uh, notepad plus plus oh yeah yeah, so that's one of my favorites. Uh, Techno Boozer showed me that uh, showed me that stuff, so it's pretty cool. All right, so uh, with that, the first thing we're going to do is a uh, we're, we're actually going to get a, a GPG.
able to use that uh, shared clipboard. So I'm hoping I did run that already. So I'm hoping that it's ready to go. So let me see if I can paste it. It would be really uh, sad if I can't. Uh, but I already did do all of my updates and upgrades, so um, that shouldn't be an issue. Let me also make sure I have the this stuff. Okay, cool. Yeah. So uh, with this, uh, what we're doing is importing the the PGP key here. So that is that. Uh, I can keep going if, if uh, everybody is caught up. Shouldn't be that difficult there. All good on my end. Awesome. The next thing we're going to do is a uh, install apt transport. I think we're able to make it so that we can um, download from an HTTPS source. So I'm going to paste that here. Awesome. And then the next one is adding a last search uh, repository. So let me copy and paste this. And uh, a lot of these instructions and uh, commands come from John. So everybody can thank him in the chat. Awesome. Next thing is uh, get uh, update and install Elasticsearch. And honestly, after this, what I can do is share the notepad document that has all of these so that if you're uh, wanting to just be able to copy and paste, we can do that too. Yeah, and I, I think it's probably just better if uh, I, I, I'm moving through it very slowly, but if uh, anybody wants to come off mic and be like, hey, slow down for a second, or, you know, what were you doing there? Absolutely. And, and for those who aren't aware what a lot of those commands do, um, adding in the, the GPG key to, um, to your system will um, allow you to securely verify the packages you're downloading. And then um, a couple of the commands that update the uh, source list D update is, is the adding additional sources to um, the app repository, which is used for um, uh, downloading um, programs onto your system. So you're just, it's adding additional sources so the system knows where to go to pull down these additional programs that are not normally in Ubuntu's um, apt database. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for that. And uh, this is definitely a collaborative effort. So uh, there are a lot smarter people on here than I am. So if at any point you want to come off and expand on things, absolutely feel free to. It's not bothering me at all. Um, okay, so the next thing uh, we're going to run is a uh, daemon, 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 daemon. Anybody want to correct me on that one? I'm not really sure. I've, uh, I'm pretty Personal sure. preference, man. Yeah, the daemon reload then, because I feel like it makes it sound uh, way better. That's kind of anticlimactic, though. <laughs> Most systems are daemon, so I, I'll go with that one, too. Demon. Uh, all right, and the next one is uh, we're going to enable that uh, Elasticsearch service here. So you actually already have that there. So you're getting this uh, from this. It's kind of telling you how to do it right there as well. So And now we are going to use the system control function to enable this specific service. Uh, and the next thing we are going to do is, let me make sure I'm doing this one right. Uh, we're installing uh, Kibana, so we are going to sudo apt get uh, Kibana. 
Oh, am I not writing these down? Or oh, geez, my bad, y'all. Here, let me let me paste the the other ones in here while this one runs. Uh, I put in the reload. Did I put the Alas assertion? No, I didn't. Did I? No. Hey, you might have already covered this. Um, how much RAM do I need for this system? Yeah, so I put it at four, uh, four, uh, 4096 and with two cores. And I don't know if that's actually the recommended. I saw eight gigs of RAM was the recommended, uh, like for like online, I, I saw some documentation pointing to eight gigs of RAM. Uh, and I also saw that if you're doing this in a cloud environment, you have to use a T2 large, which is, I, I don't know, it sounds expensive. I don't know if anybody wants to comment on that, but I haven't actually spun anything other than the free versions up, so. so All right, good to know. Well, how about your disk space? How much disk space are you using for this? Uh, I think I saw 10 gigs was the. <laughs> Whoa, okay. Hey Floppy, do you mind so, just pasting in that um, that notepad? Uh, oh yeah, thing? I guess I could just the whole thing, huh? I think I think you may have missed a command, maybe, or maybe I might have missed one. Uh, yeah, I put sudo apt get. Here, let me see. Yeah, I'm just gonna put the whole the whole thing in here. So, so Jesse, as far as system requirements for this, um, it's gonna vary. You know, if you're actually using it in a production environment or running workloads, obviously you're going to need more um, resources dedicated to it. Uh, but really, for what we're doing here, you don't need a whole lot because we're just getting the system running. Now, if you're going to start processing a bunch of data, obviously you're going to need to allocate more resources to it. Absolutely. All right. And and so that the the goal was to be able to get this on a, some people's resume, right? Uh, and and just kind of like walk through this. But uh, I definitely think that as it scales, you, you definitely need some more uh, processing power. But yeah, I'm going to use it for a test system for sure. So this is perfect. Thank you. No problem. All right. So we have installed Kibana at this point. So we're all the way to if you're in the if you actually download that text file, we should be at the well, let me see. Of course, I closed it out when I. We should be at uh, demon reload number two. So I'll pause after I put this one in. So the ones that I have run currently, if you don't have the text file, are the uh, app get install Kibana. So I will post here. And then sudo system control daemon reload. Does anybody want to walk through what daemon reload does? So uh, every daemon is like a process running in the background. Uh, what that command does is tells the system to reload the system CTL daemon. Asking our friend uh, ChatGPT as well. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I'm actually I'm super excited. I don't know if anybody's watched any uh, Joe Rogan. I, I don't actually watch it that often, but one of the memes that came from that was, uh, "Hey Jamie, pull that up, right?" Like the he's, there's I think one of the more funny ones was like he's like, "Did you see where that guy pulled that that ape pulled that that guy's arm off?" Jamie, pull that up. And so uh, ChatGPT is my Jamie currently. So, but yeah. You're uh, you're you're right on it, that John. I I like to go in and I'll be like, what is this? And then I'll be like, now explain it to me like I'm five, so that I can really understand <laughs> what's going on there. All right. Uh, is anyone else need a little extra time to catch up to where we are? Okay. Now we are going to enable the Kibana service using that system control here. Uh, and now, after that is finished, we will install Logstash.
And I did see uh, a really cool analogy or metaphor uh, for this is, is if you think about the system as like a giant library uh, and you're like centrally located in the library and you're trying to pull as much information as quickly as possible. Uh, Beats is kind of like messengers running out and grabbing books for you. Um, and then like Logstash is the, like, you know, the place that you're, you know, pulling all this data to like a table, if you will. And then you're the, the processor. So you'd be like the Elasticsearch, which is pretty cool. And then the whiteboard behind you as you draw all the data in a, in a way that's visually appealing would be your, your Kibana. Awesome. So Logstash is installed. Now we will do another uh, daemon reload. and then enable that logstash service. Actually, let me, uh, with the, the daemon reload, you can actually just up to get to that, that other one. So I shouldn't have to paste that if you guys want. I was all already pasted a few times. Everybody confirm that they did actually do it though. All right, and then you'll, Enable logstash.service. So just to uh, to clarify what all those system control commands are doing, uh, the enable command, for those that don't know, uh, is telling the system to start those processes when the system starts. So there's a bunch of different commands I can use within system control. Uh, start starts a service, restart restarts a service, and enable tells the system to start the service upon system start. Absolutely. So yeah, you can see those uh, here. It's uh, we are actually going to uh, reboot at the end of this rather than um, starting all of these independent services. So it'll just make it easier. Which John had to explain why we're. <laughs> <laughs> rebooting but yeah anyway uh, out of that <clears throat> so we just uh, enabled log stash service so we should be able to move on to uh, system control status and I actually don't know if this one's uh, necessary John right it's just showing us what's going on so once you've rebooted those services should have should start, and you're just confirming that everything is starting as it should have. Right. But as you didn't reboot the system, they won't be there right now. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to see. So that that one I'm probably a little out of order there for me. May have messed that up. Um, and then uh, sudo vim. This is where it gets a little tricky. So I will go very slowly here. We're going to uh, sudo vim the Elasticsearch uh, YAML file. <sighs> Son of a... What is it? Sudo apt install. I did this before, guys. Don't don't uh, just install random things without verifying. I actually, <laughs> I didn't verify where this came from, so um, I'm pretty sure this is the correct command, though. If you don't have Vim on your uh, clean new Ubuntu VM, you can sudo apt install them. Yeah, I ran into or that as well. Or use VI or Nano or whatever yeah, yeah. you want to use. Absolutely. Um, but for the sake of making this easy, we'll go with them because it's already there. Um, all right. And then what we're going to do in the YAML file is go down and remove the hash in front of uh, what was. Let me see where it is. Is it uh, HTTP port, I believe, right? Let me make sure I have some notes. Correct. Yep. So we're getting rid of the, the hash here. So we will delete that. Press I. There you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I actually don't think you have to. If you just delete, it didn't. I didn't require me to press I there. So I'm hoping that it worked. But uh, yeah, if, if you're not familiar with uh, Vim, you do have to click I uh, to, to start insert mode. Um, but I'm pretty sure if you just press delete, it will automatically move into insert mode and delete that hashtag. And then from there, you press escape and then, oh man, I'll put this all in here. Hey, Floppy, was uh, what what was the name of that line? Or what was on that line again? Was it server yeah, port? Yeah. It was, uh, server port, yep. 
Or was it HTTP yeah. port? HTTP port. Yeah, it's in the in the network uh, portion, and it is a HTTP port. Okay. And like I said, for everybody, I, I assume uh, most people know this already, but for Vim specifically, uh, in order to enter into insert mode, you press I, and then you can actually type what you need to, but uh, I'm not going to. But then from there, you press escape to get back to whatever the standard mode is. I, I think it's called command. Command, or I know it starts with a C. But, uh, but yeah, anyway, and then to actually exit, you get the colon and then write quit. You have to have pseudo privileges typically, so that's why we do the pseudo vim. For those that uh, want to look even more like a hacker, instead of hitting the delete key, you can hit X when you're not in insert mode, and that'll delete it. Ooh, all right. Yeah, hackers. Um, I did want to also point out here that we are just basically setting it up so that when you visit this on on uh, the network, you will actually be able to to uh, access the the um, interface, right? Or wait, no, that's for Kibana, isn't it? This is just where the the data gets fed, if I'm not mistaken. Let me see. I actually wrote that, that down in my notes as well. Uh, yeah, so the the Elasticsearch is listening on port 92 for incoming requests. Uh, and so that that's what we're opening up here. Logstash is going to listen on 5044 and then Kibana is going to be 5601. Okay, yep, here we go. All right, sorry. All right, back out of here. I think I can just queue. All right, and then what we are going to do from here is open up my notepad again. Uh, we're going to edit the Kibana YAML file now. So I'll put that in here. There's actually going to be two things in here, I believe, that we are going to do. So we're going to remove the server port hash on this and the hash before Elasticsearch hosts. So we'll go in here. We're going to go down to here. So we're going to get rid of the Elasticsearch hosts. So align this to be defined. And then the other one is server port, which I don't know if I passed it already or not. Did I pass it? He was at the top. Yeah, I was gonna say I feel like I didn't have to go this far last time. If anybody wants a secret, you can do a forward slash and and do, type in what you're looking for. Hit enter, um, and then hit hit enter. Oh yeah, you can do that. Yeah, perfect. Noise. There we go. We're just learning a bunch about Vim. Uh, all right, awesome. So we got rid of server port, and uh, it is important to note that you have uh, five six zero one. Um, and if you do mess with the file in or the port number in Elasticsearch, you just need to write it down because uh, it is it is going to be. I think you'd have to change it down here if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I believe you'd have to change it down in here. So, with that being said, we're gonna jump out of here. All right. And then uh, we're going to restart the VM. So sudo reboot. Hoping that this goes quickly. Are y'all able to still see my stream here? Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Yep. See you just fine. Heck yeah. I will say, uh, John, that the last time this actually just like timed out here so i'm hoping that it doesn't do that this time <laughs> not sure why i did that to me but it doesn't like you that's why yeah yep all right well <laughs> i might just uh stop the the machine here. I have confirmed it's working for me. Nice. 
I'm going to uh, probably close out. For some reason, last time it, it like just got stuck like this, so I'm going to. Uh, also, does anybody want to talk about which one of these is the best way to shut down the VM if you're like trying to not kill it? I actually don't. I, I was wondering between this one and this one, is which would be considered oh. more destructive, I guess. We're not able to see that little pop-up because oh. of because of Discord. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, Is yeah. it like the kill? Oh, or this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have send the shutdown signal or power off the machine. And I've always like done power off the machine, but I don't know for sure if that's correct. So power off the machine will be like pulling the plug on it. Uh, yeah. Sending the signal will be like pushing the button in your system, and then relying on your system to then go and shut down properly. But if your system's like stuck in a state like where it's at, you you yeah. need to power it off because it won't respond to the other way. All right, we'll we'll power it off and then power that back on. That classic IT <laughs> trick. But but typ typically the best way to do it would be sending the signal, and that yeah. will kind of guarantee the system will go down safely but in most cases when that won't work if the system's kind of like frozen up oh come on <laughs> might have to have somebody else do this do you want me to just share screens so I can be like, hey, yeah, this is the end? Yeah, if you want. I mean, I, I'm mad that it's not working. I had it I had it running. You're s hey, you just let me know, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely yeah, doing I something because I see, I see the hard drive light flickering um, on, uh, yeah, right there. So it's doing something. Sheesh. I don't know if you gave it enough, how many cores you gave it. So maybe it's just running slow. I think it too. Yeah, it was uh, last time. It definitely, um, I did have to stop it. So um, I think if you hit Control, was it Control Alt F one? It might give you a loading screen. Alt. Does not seem to have done anything, unfortunately. Oof! Come on, y'all. All right. All right. Oh. It's doing something. Actually, my computer's doing something. I can hear the uh, cross. Like, it's uh, something beefy's going on over there. All right, yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and move to someone else's screen so that everybody can see what happens when you actually set this up correctly. But quick disclaimer: I was able to get this running right. Uh, uh, oh, oh yeah. there you go. Uh, just in time. You heard me. The IT gods are listening. <laughs> no 404 believer right here. The no believers. <laughs> oh my god. So cold sounding. Um all right. Let's do this thing. All right. So uh to confirm that it is actually up and running, we are going to and like we said before, you can actually you don't have to reboot. If you want to go in and just sudo uh system control uh start all three services, you'd you'd get the same result most likely. Um so I probably should have just done that with how long that took, but uh, it is simpler to just reboot. So uh, with that, we are going to go to HTTP, I think it's local host, and then it is, uh, what is it, 92? 5601. Yeah, 5601, that's right. There you go. And this is the Elasticsearch uh, web interface so you can go in there and configure a last to search um one thing i did want to show because this isn't so this is the initial part right so we're we're actually we've created a foundation for it the issue that we're seeing so we won't actually be able to play with the functionality tonight is that in order to get any type of visualization you do have to feed it data right and so there's a few ways to do that um but what we can do is let me go ahead and stop streaming this real quick and then what i will open up is another um it's basically a demo environment for uh elastic search so let's see where did i put that i think i had it in the resources thing then okay yeah yeah 
All right. Let's see. All right. With this, you're actually seeing the the demo environment here. Hey, thanks, Jesse. Oh, he's already gone. All right. Uh, so this is the the demo environment, and I can actually post this down in the. Oh, that's not it. I'll post this down in the in the meetup text. I think this should work so that everybody can kind of jump in. But this is really just showing you the functionality, uh, how how you can visualize the, the data. Um, and so what we can do is go in here and look at the, the pre-built dashboards. Um, so we can look at detection and response. And so what you're able to see here is, is how some of this stuff works. I think this one might be, yeah. So I didn't get to really play with this uh, as much. Why? The first time I did it, I was able to see some pretty cool things almost immediately, but. So we get alerts. Okay, yeah, so here we go. We're seeing, this is the, the data that we're importing down here, and then you can see uh, like trends and, and tables up here. Um, and then I was just interested uh, with uh, Code Blue, are you are you actively in the uh, elastic like in the kibana portal doing this stuff or do you have any you know experience with this yeah, that's that's pretty much where i spend most of my time i that's don't awesome. spend the back end at all the sysadmin yeah. you know control the back end yeah absolutely so i was just wondering are there like specific use cases that you could be like, hey, this is, you know, what we're using it for, because uh, I was interested in that. I, I have some that I, I looked up, but I was just wondering, because we have somebody who's, you know, more familiar with it. Well, if this has um, a thing that's called a watcher, if you do the search in the top there, that's how you do uh, alerting and reporting. You can send, okay. like, the emails or text messages. Oh, doesn't look like I can do that. But you said you have the upgraded version as well, right? Sure. Correct. Yeah. So when I looked at this free version, it looks like it's missing quite a bit of functionality that we would yeah. we actually take advantage of it in the work environment. Oh, cool. Yeah. So and, and that's uh, that that does bring up like one thing that like as as I was searching with the integrations portion of this, there are a bunch of things that you can integrate uh, the Elk stack into. I do know that most cloud environments have this as a pre-built. Um, VM, so you, you can, or instance, so you're able to do that very quickly. Uh, and you can see AWS and Azure do have some integrations here. We have a container integration as well. Um, but yeah, so a lot, a lot going on here. Uh, I do believe that the functionality portion is probably going to be a, another, another evening. So, uh, but I did want to share this. So if anybody's interested in seeing the functionality, this is kind of uh, where, where you can go. Uh, and, and what I'd like to do next time is is uh, if everybody keeps that VM, uh, we can try to, I can try to find the log file and we can actually do analysis on it uh, and like feed it to the, the Elk stack. So, but awesome. That's really all I have. Does anybody have any other questions or concerns before I, uh, you know, end it? No, awesome work, man. This is cool. I've never set up an Elk stack from scratch. So definitely learned a lot. Yeah, awesome. Sure. Yeah. And the cool other uh, cool thing is you can actually feed this uh, into the, the network side of things too. So um, like, or rather you can feed the network side into this as well. So um, pretty cool stuff, but awesome. All right, well, uh, with that, I am going to be followed by Barry. <laughs>